Now the first thing I'm going to bring up is you need to be working at Marvelous Designer scale in order for your UVs to transfer into a pattern appropriately. Uh, so what I'm going to do is double click this avatar, go into, I don't know, Mail version 2, double click this. Uh, that'll load up the avatar in Marvelous. Go in here to File, Export, OBJ, and then right on my desktop, we'll name this Marv Avatar, save it as an OBJ. We'll do Select All Avatar, Single Object Weld, hit OK. And we'll hop into ZBrush here. I'm going to go out of edit mode, hit Control N to clear my canvas. Go in here to the simple brush, go to import, go to my desktop, grab the Marvelous Avatar, drag that in on my canvas, go into edit mode, and this is what I need to match, this scale. Uh, so for example, if I want to go back to my other asset here, I'm going to alt tap his body, go back to my Marvelous Avatar, go in here to subtool, append, grab my uh, body from my other file, select that. Uh, I don't even know where it is in space, it's probably really tiny. I'm going to go down here to deformation, unify, and that'll make my avatar the same size as the Marvel Designer avatar. So, go ahead and delete that, rename this to avatar, and that's, how I'm, that's the scale I'm going to be working at for the rest of this video. So the first thing we need to do is make our object, and that's going to be a shirt in this case, that we're going to take in a Marvelous Designer. This is the avatar that we're going to take in, we're going to stick our clothes to it, but we'll duplicate this off. We'll turn off the original uh, body here, and this is going to be our shirt mask. So I'm going to hold down Control, switch this over to Mask Lasso, I'm going to go to the side view. We're just going to mask where a shirt would generally end up going, so across the waist and across the wrist. Of course, that wrist is a little bit weird, so we're going to hold down Control from the front view and just mask where that wrist should go. So now we have our basic shirt shape. Uh, masked. So we're going to go in here to Geometry, Edge Loop, and we're going to say Edge Loop Mask Border. If I turn on Polyframe, you're going to see that's going to slice through our mask and it's going to leave, if I control drag to unmask, a polygroup where my shirt's going to go. So I'm going to hold down Control Shift, select that polygroup, do a Geometry, Modify Topology, Delete Hidden, and then we have Xsymmetry turned on. So we're going to go uh, into Zero Mesh and we're going to Zero Mesh this. However, before I do that, I want to clean up these edges a little bit. So let's go down here to Masking, and I'm going to turn off these two and just mask our open border. So we're going to click this button. Now our border's mask. We're going to Control Tap in our canvas to invert that mask. We're going to go here to Deformation. Uh, just do Polish by Features. We'll do this to Open Circle. Uh, just tap that and then drag to the right. And that'll clean up our edge borders there. So if I Control Drag, that'll unmask. And now we can go back up here to Geometry. Zero Mesher. I'm going to just say Half. Hit Zero Mesh. And because we want nice even quads, let's go ahead and drop that adaptive size down to zero and just hit zero mesh again. Now, if I go back up to our body here and we turn that on, you see it shirt's a little bit tight. So let's go down here to our deformation again under inflate. And let's inflate our shirt out just a little bit. Uh, now I want to start slicing in where our pattern's going to go or how our shirt is put together. And then that's going to turn into our UVs, which is going to turn into our pattern. So I'm going to hold down control shift, go in here to slice curve. I'm going to hold down control shift and I'm going to tap once to get a nice bendy line and then of course you can use a space bar to move this around and then let go and that'll go ahead and slice through where uh, I want the shirt uh, seam to go. Uh, it's not a mirrored operation so back over here to geometry modify topology mirror and weld across the x-axis now it's the same on both sides hold down control shift and tap the middle part of the shirt go to the side view again hold down control shift and then keep tapping once as we drag so we can go ahead and just slice through the shirt front to back. So control shift tap to bring everything else back. And you can see we've kind of got a little bit messier geometry, so let's go ahead and fix that. Let's go in here to zero mesh again, half. This time we'll turn on keep groups because we want to keep our poly groups. Smooth groups down to zero because they're already pretty smooth. Hit zero mesher. And you can see if we go into solo mode, we've got some problems around the neck, some problems around the bottom here. So let's go ahead and hit undo. This time let's do same zero mesh. And let's clean up some of these areas here. So right here, uh, we're going to BZM to our Z Modeler brush. We'll just hover over this edge and we'll do split edge here. And we can just move these verts around. We can hold down shift to smooth if we want to. And you see, okay, this is the problem. So again, back in Z Modeler brush, you can hover over an edge and we're gonna say collapse edge. We're just gonna collapse this down and we'll do another split. So again, we'll hover over an edge, hold down space bar, and we'll say split. And again, we're just doing a little bit of cleanup work. Uh, I can hold down Alt and start painting here and then tap Shift to inherit that poly group. So now we've got a nice clean cut along here and then along the bottom here. You can see I've got like a, a piece of geometry here that's, if I use the move brush, that kind of went over here to this side. Again, we'll just do another split edge here 
Go ahead and move those around. And then again, hold down Alt, start painting, tap Shift. And we'll clean those up. So now that those are clean, just to play it safe, I'm going to do a geometry, modify topology, mirror and weld across the X again, and then zero mesh or half, keep groups, smooth groups down to zero. And there we go. We got a nice clean version of our geometry that we can go ahead and UV now. So to go into UV mode, that's going to be under your Z plugin. So you can see I have a brush palette over here. I'm going to take my Z plugin with the open circle, drag it over here. And then down here at the bottom is UV master. I want symmetry and polygroups on because this is a symmetrical mesh and I do have polygroups. I'm going to hit unwrap. And then in order to see our UVs, I'm going to be in solo mode so I don't see anything else but the shirt. I'm going to go down here to flatten. And here's our UVs. Now I'm going to turn off X symmetry because it's not going to work uh, the way this is set up. And I'm going to clean up these patterns. And I'm just going to insert a little addendum here. If you do go in here and unwrap uh, and then you check your seams and it's like, oh, I don't want a seam down the middle. I want a seam down the side. Go over here to enable control painting, say attract. And I'm just going to paint where I want to attract that line. And then you can use protect to paint where you want to protect a seam from showing up. But now with uh, this, I can do unwrap. And now when I do a check seams, you're going to see that seam line is right where I want it to be. You can take them as is into Marvelous Designer. Uh, but if I was drawing a pattern in Marvelous Designer, you know, this would probably be straight. This would be straight. These arms would be straight. So I'm going to go ahead and do that with my UVs now. And then uh, when I throw it into Marvelous Designer, it'll convert these UVs to a pattern for me. And they'll be nice and straight. One easy way to do that in ZBrush is again back in Z Modeler, BZM for that brush. Hover over an edge. And we're going to just going to say holding down spacebar, so hover over an edge, hold down spacebar, transpose, edge loop partial. And that's going to mask from this sharp corner down to this sharp corner. I can hold down Alt to move the gizmo, and I'm just going to scale in that direction just to flatten them all along that edge. And I can tap off, or tap onto a mesh to get rid of the gizmo, and then tap again to go back into gizmo mode, and then very quickly just go through, tapping, tapping again, hold down Alt to reposition the gizmo, scale if I want to, and then just kind of go around my mesh and make sure that everything's generally nice and flat. Again, using Alt with my gizmo to reposition it, tapping off, tapping back on, and then scaling in that direction. Now I'm only going to straighten one of the arms out because I'm going to mirror this over later and we'll talk a little bit about that functionality in Marvelous Designer. I mean, feel free to straighten this out if you want to. It's not a huge deal, but uh, I'm going to make sure none of these are overlapping. So I'm going to hold down Control Shift, switch this back to select rectangle, grab a little piece of this one, Control Shift A to visibility grow all, Control Tap in my document to mask that, Control Shift Tab to bring everything else back, Control Tap to invert that, and then we can just move this out of the way. Uh, if you have your own polygroup, you can just Control Tap it and that'll just select that polygroup. So that's a little bit easier. Incidentally, if you did want to, you could also go in here to back here down here to masking like we did again mask by your open border and in this view your open border is actually going to be your UV border and then you can just go back in here to deformation I uh, do a polish or polish by features and that'll relax all the unmasked points not really necessary because I don't really care about the UVs uh, but just in case you flatten something out and there's some overlapping areas you can use that to kind of relax the interior points I'm going to go back over here to UV master we're going to say unflatten and if we turn on check seams you're going to see it actually put that arm Let's turn off polyframe. You can see it put that arm seam line down there at the bottom. So these are where our seams are going to go. Perfect. Again, if we go back in here to flatten, these are our UVs. Great. So now we have a 3D representation of a shirt. We have UVs that we want to make into a pattern in Marvelous. So I think we're ready to go into Marvelous Designer. Now we are going to be exporting OBJ. So when I turn on polyframe, you're going to see I have a bunch of polygroups on here. There's an You can go in here to like preferences import export export and you can turn off group if you want to or you can just hit control w to make this all one polygroup same thing for the avatar control w make it all one polygroup we're going to go in here to export and uh, we're just going to save this as avatar obj and then down here on the shirt we're going to export this and we're going to save it as shirt obj so then we're going to hop into marvelous designer so we're going to go in here to file import obj and we'll bring the avatar first so just double click the avatar now uh, we're going to change this to, uh, I guess, open, avatar, hit OK. Let's go ahead and tap the avatar and we'll change his color so we can see his clothing a little bit better on him. And then we're going to go back in here to file, import, OBJ. This time we'll bring in our shirt, OBJ. 
Uh, we're going to say add, switch this to garment, make sure trace 2D patterns from UV map is checked on, hit OK. And that'll convert our 3D object to our UVs to a pattern, and then that's going to place our pattern onto our object where our 3D model was. So now uh, we can start using Marvelous Designer to make this shirt. Uh, one thing I did do though is I, I straightened this arm out, but I didn't straighten this arm out uh, on purpose just so we can talk a little bit more about this in case you needed to do some Marvelous Designer stuff. So we're going to delete this out of here. We're going to take our arm, right click it, and say Symmetric Pattern with Sewing, and we'll just place that right here. Uh, of course, when we want to simulate this, we want to make sure it goes around his arm. So let's go ahead and position this quickly in the viewport. And then again, let's go check our sewing. So I'm gonna, by default, you'll probably be in here under edit sewing. So you can go through and see this arm has uh, all the sewing on here. You just roll over these. You can see this is where the arm is sewn. However, as you can see, uh, these two are sewn. However, this one is not sewn. So let's figure out where we need to sew this. I'm gonna switch this to MN free sewing. And then back in my viewport here, I'm gonna go from this armpit. I'm gonna click right here so I can see where this point is on my patterns. And I can say, okay, down here, that's my armpit. So I'm gonna go from the armpit up to the top, up to the uh, top of the shirt here. And that's going to correspond to, if I click on this part of the arm, this part of the arm up to the top. So I'm gonna say, okay, from this point all the way up, hit enter, and that's gonna go from Again, this point over here, all the way up to that blue point, hit enter. And then on the other side here, this part of the shirt, so it's gonna go from the, again, the armpit all the way to the top. So again, MN sewing, we're gonna click here, all the way to the top, hit enter, and then go back here to the armpit, and then all the way over here to where our other pattern stopped, hit enter. And now when we hit the space bar, you'll see this is our shirt here. And you can see some of these, for some reason, uh, the uh, pattern didn't extend all the way to the points. We can fix that really quick, too. We can just go in here to Edit Sewing. I'm just going to click and drag this over just to make sure all these sewing things are going all the way to the ends like they should. And speaking of the patterns themselves, it's just editable like any other pattern. So if we hit Z on our keyboard, you can go in and you can go into Edit Curve Point, for example, right-click this one and say... Convert to segment point if you want. And then the opposite, if you want to go in here to uh, edit pattern, right click this point, say convert to curve point. You can do that as well. Go in here and you can select a point and just delete it out of your scene if it's not useful to you. So again, these are just perfectly editable patterns, however you want to edit them. Uh, and then again, we'll go over here, hold down our tap space bar. And it looks like we need to fix this little point here. So I'm going to zoom in. And we're just going to push this sewing around so that it's uh, where they're supposed to go and they meet up where they're supposed to go. Then when I hit spacebar, there we go. That'll be nice. And how they're supposed to look. Uh, so now with all of these selected, we can hit uh, A in our keyboard, select all the patterns. We'll switch our particle distance down to like maybe eight. Again, we'll go ahead and keep simulating. We can go in here to the material property. So this is the material that's assigned to these. And if you just want to make sure, you can select all of them and they can... You can select all of them and then you can hit this little button right here. So this is material and with the selected we can go down here to the presets and we can switch this over to we'll switch to cotton. We can select all these. We want to make it a little bit of a... I mean again we made it a form-fitting shirt by default but we can always go in here to the shrinkage and say you know what let's do 110 for the weft and warp and we'll just go ahead and Make that a little more baggy. And there you go. We have a shirt that, again, was dictated by the 3D object that we made and then uh, also the patterns that we ended up making. And again, you can go through here, and if we want to change any of this, we'll go back in here to, like, let's edit the whole curvature for here. We'll drop that neck a little bit lower. Again, hit spacebar. And very quickly, uh, we have a shirt. Of course, if we want to head back into ZBrush with the shirt, we can. We can just go in here to File, Export, OBJ. Call it shirt simulated. Uh, patterns and avatars is fine. We'll do single object welded. We'll hit OK. We'll hop back into ZBrush here. We'll go out of edit mode. Say always switch. Hit Control N to clear a canvas. We'll get a Polymesh 3D. Go to import. And we'll grab our shirt simulated. Drag this out. Let's go out of polyframe mode here. So if I hold down Control Shift and just grab over a part of the avatar, Control Shift A, and then Subtool Split Hidden. That's going to be under your Subtool Split menu. Uh, now we've got the shirt. Of course, if we want to remesh and simplify the shirt in ZBrush, we can. 
I'm going to hold down Control and Tap to make to store these points in history, so we can always uh, project back to them. If I turn on Polyframe here, we can say zero mesh half, depth size down to zero. Again, nice even quads. Although in this case, we may want to build in more of the curvature. So instead of I think we'll do it down here. Instead of uh, geometry zero mesh or uh, depth of size, we can maybe pull up a little bit. And then while we're doing this, I'm going to go up here to project, and we're going to do project history. Remember, we stored these points in history, so we can say project history. Uh, we can do, again, zero mesh half to lower the uh, poly count. We'll say project history. We'll say zero mesh half. There we go. So we got a nice new shirt mesh, and we can get our details back by going to project history. Of course, if we want to, we can also uh, go into Z Modeler brush, hover over an edge, say close convex hole. If we want to go ahead and close this off, let's hold down Control Shift and tap those polygroups. Control W, and now we've got a closed off mesh, but we still want to project our detail back. So let's go down here to crease. I'm going to say crease PG to hold those edges a little bit better as I subdivide. So I'm going to hit Control D to subdivide. Control Shift tap the green part, say project history. Control Shift tap to bring everything else back. Control D to subdivide. Control Shift tap the green to project history. Control Shift tap to subdivide or to bring everything else back. Control D to subdivide or hit this divide button. Control Shift tap the green, project history. So now we've got our details back on this mesh here. We don't need this point in history stored anymore, so I'm going to control tap here and then control tap again. And I'm going to go through here and just kind of do a light smooth over these wrinkles. And of course, when you were in Marvel's Designer, if you wanted to bring in a higher resolution object, you just drop your particle distance down uh, even lower, and that'll get you more uh, resolution. But this is fine for uh, demonstration purposes. So I'm manually smoothing this out. Of course, you can go through and you can use deformation polish. Uh, you can do deformation smooth if you want to do the whole mesh. But again, I'm just kind of taking a look at what the mesh looks like and then going through and smoothing uh, where I want to. Now, at this point, you can start detailing up your shirt. You can go into, I like to use like um, damn standard 02, which you can find on the internet. You can go through here and you can make your own seam lines. Let's go ahead and hit Control D one more time. Uh, then we can get some nice sharp seam lines built in here. We can go through and we can just cut this down here. So again, the whole point of this was just to go from 3D objects to your UVs. Use that as a pattern in Marvel's Designer to quickly dial in your shape and then take this back into ZBrush. Of course, there's many different ways you could go about doing this. You know, you could keep your UVs back and forth. Um, in this case, I just zero mesh, so not a huge deal. But again, just as a quick way to go uh, from 3D over to Marvelous and then back again. That's one workflow you could give a shot.